Action. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Crashing through the lies and disinformation, it's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for this Easter Worldwide Transmission. It is the 20th day of April, 2014. I am your host, Alex Jones. You know, I was looking back over news from earlier in the week, not just the Bundy Ranch uh, situation, but a lot of other uh, big developments that have been unfolding. And it's just crazy to think about how bizarre our world has gotten and just how serious my normalcy bias has become. I myself have been conditioned, I myself have become acclimated uh, to this imperious, imperial, government and, and ring of, of parasitic corporations that are gaming every sector of the economy and the culture uh, as cold-bloodedly as terraforming aliens would do that arrived on Earth to remove us from its surface. I mean, they might as well be War of the Worlds, craft coming down from the sky to colonize the planet and wipe out humanity. Uh, I mean, that's how evil these people are. That's how inhuman they are, and everything they do is, is developed and deployed to hurt humanity. And I think it's the realization of that that is going to save us. Look at all the other civilizations and all the craziness they had to put up with. And I know more and more, I just repeat this like a parrot, but everything else is just signpost on that road to perdition, on that road to domestication. And not domestication for just simple control, for control and the security for the elite, but they want control to further dumb down and mutate and stupefy and GMO the, the addled, already uh, sick population that's being slowly euthanized, uh, not just for the security of the planet and its, its organisms in the future, no, 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 for the cruel, psychopathic, sadistic enjoyment uh, of the ruling class. That's what we're talking about uh, on this Sunday transmission. Because if we're going to protect all the good, if we're going to protect uh, all the hardworking people, all the innocents, we have to learn to recognize evil. And it is the recognition of evil, it is the recognizing evil that allows us to then break with it and deal with it and stop it and reduce it. And you'll never totally get rid of all of it as long as humans are running around. But the point is, is that you've got to recognize it. And you've got to realize it's your responsibility. And it's a good responsibility. It's an empowering responsibility. It's an enlightening responsibility to stand up against these tyrants and to call them out and to resist them. A few days ago, I talked about the Declaration of Independence and the Bundy situation. I want to do that again. I'm a little bit calmer today. I kind of got wound up earlier in the week. And then I want to get into the uh, Jewish community shooting as well. I haven't really talked enough about that. And I also want to talk about the Tea Party and how it ties in to today's Tea Party, but the original Tea Party. And a story from earlier in the week that was in a bunch of publications, the CBO came out with it. 86 million full-time private sector workers sustain 148 million benefit takers. So we're going to be uh, going over all of that and some of the new news uh, that's been uh, breaking and developing as well, but the establishment will have articles out there telling us about a cop who took naked pictures with his patients, gynecologist, video voyeurism, and, and you know, it's the greatest and most evil thing ever seen on the planet, and I agree it's a bad thing to do, but it, it pales in significance to the scientific destruction of the human genetics and human genome by a group claiming they're doing it to save the earth, to remove the scourge and the parasitical uh, humanoids off its face. But in truth, they are genetically butchering plant, animal, microorganism, you name it, across the board. They are playing God, and they're doing it in a reckless, mad scientist, Island of Dr. Maru way. And that's what I'm saying, is we need to break with these people and call them out and uh, stop letting our society be run by a bunch of criminals. That's really the emergency transmission beacon message we pump out every single day, seven days a week with the news at InfoWars.com. You can follow yours truly, the pumpkin-headed Texan at Real Alex Jones. 
We'll be right back for the Easter transmission straight ahead. The globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding and making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. It is more important than ever to realize Realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the info war to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv. It's Easter, folks. KFLN, Los Angeles, Clone Radio. We play the songs that sound more like everyone else than anyone else. Clone. Hitler took the guns. Stalin took the guns. Mao took the guns. Fidel Castro took the guns. For the children. Took the guns. 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. The Republic will rise again when you attempt to take our guns. I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. The answer to 1984 is 1776. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., we're here live, back Sundays, 4 to 6 p.m., and you're listening to it. This is the Sunday edition, and it is the 20th day, of course, of April 2014 on this Easter worldwide transmission. Again, thank you so much for joining us as we blast out on the AM and FM dial across the United States. Global shortwave and internet worldwide. The news websites are Infowars.com. And then, of course, Infowarsnews.com is the nightly news seven nights a week. And we have PrisonPlanet.com, our mirror backup site. It's not really a mirror, though. It has a lot of news on it that uh, is not on Infowars.com. So be sure and check out PrisonPlanet.com. And you can always follow yours truly over on Twitter at Real Alex Jones. And we have a big Facebook. Uh, we have about 3 million Facebook followers on all of our Facebooks. We've got about 800,000 on our big one. Links to all that and the latest news as it breaks at Infowars.com. Okay, enough said. Here I am on Easter. Well, actually, here I am on Thursday recording this for Easter. Uh, but I, I just am so honored by our great Sunday audience. We almost always do it live, even when I'm out of town. David Knight, uh, who sits in for me, does a great job. Uh, but I do have some stories I wanted to tape and talk about uh, here with you because they're so important. And then we have some special interview excerpts and blasts from the past and a lot more coming up later uh, in the transmission. So again, I want to thank all the great info warriors and liberty lovers out there for tuning into the transmission today. Okay, where to start? I saw an article last week and we talked about it, but I really want to go back to this because it's from the Congressional Budget Office and CNS News covered it. 86 million full-time private sector workers sustain 148 million people who are benefit takers. I want to say that again. 86 million people work, 148 million don't and live off them. They have a name for that. They have a name. Did you ever hear of it? It's called slavery. Now, you can choose to take care of your mother or father when they're old. That's not really slavery, but, uh, you know, love is a form of slavery, a good form of it. There are lots of forms of slavery. Um, you need water to live. I, mean, I guess you're, you're, we're all slaves to water. We're all slaves to uh, energy, and we need energy. But uh, this is a bad kind of slavery. And they've couched it all in the welfare clause uh, that is in the Constitution, the general welfare clause. 
But I mean, what is the general welfare? Pretty much everybody agrees that a domesticated population is not good. That's why they tell you don't feed the animals at the national park. If you go to Yosemite Park, you go to Big Bend, you go to any of the big national parks, they'll tell you really don't feed the animals because it'll make them dependent and then they won't know how to take care of themselves. And really that's the argument here. Uh, they get well-meaning people to call for welfare and to call for give somebody free college and give somebody disability, give them this and that at the federal level. It's supposed to be at the state level, so it can be decided properly. And, of course, there should be some form of help out there. But what happens when, when they make it impossible with taxes to produce anymore? What happens with the giant population of 148 million people who are takers? That's not counting all the government pension funds and the rest of it. What happens? Well, generally, the whole society collapses, and they put, this has happened in every communist country, pretty much every communist country, and authoritarian was going back thousands of years. They put you in forced labor camps. They called them workhouses in England. And they have debtors' prisons and stuff like that. And all that's being brought back now under new names. So how's the welfare system working for you? Well, it's Cloward and Piven, and that's just one plan we've talked about for 15, 16 years on air, of my 19 years on air. It was back in the 60s, a sociology plan by a husband and wife that got adopted by the Democrats to bankrupt society by design to bring in full socialism and social control. Because, see, the social engineers want socialism at the grassroots, exempting the big banks and others from the taxes so that they can run your life. I mean, it's real simple. Like sharecropping. If you've got a sharecropper uh, and if you study sharecropping, it was slavery for white folks. They just didn't call it slavery. You had to sign a contract where you could only buy your food and stuff at the company store where they overcharged you. And you could never get out of debt. And then for generations, you would stay on that farm as a slave. And they didn't have to take care of you if you got sick or anything. And, of course, it started out with indentured servants. You'd sign on for a 5, 7, or 10, or 14-year tour of indentured servitude as a contract for the ship passage uh, to Australia or to the United States uh, or to, um, you know, the new Dutch colonies, any of them. You would sign a contract and then you would be put on a ship and then you'd be a slave. Of course, they had pure slavery as well. They would just knock you on the head and uh, put you on ships as part of press gangs as well. The British and French and others did that. And they like to grab usually about 10-year-old boys. Because, you know, the state always wants to grab kids when they're young to reprogram them. The Russian government does that for their tax police, mainly made up of orphans that literally the state's their parents. I mean, that's what this is. The state's the daddy and the mommy. And then you take the kids basically from the mother, like you take eggs from a hen at birth, to quote George Arwell, when he was talking about the Stalinist model or North Korean model. Now they just tell the women the cool thing to do is get your husband out of the house as soon as possible, or never marry him. You don't need that piece of garbage anyways. And then the state's there to help you with some stuff and you know, give your kid lots of shots and things, and you wonder why your kid gets leukemia when they're 12. But hey, whatever. You know, the planet's overpopulated, right? We all heard that. So, so this is just the reality uh, on this Easter transmission. Uh, it's the ugly truth here, ladies and gentlemen. And then you get somebody like Clive and Bundy. Clive and Bundy, seven generations out in southern Nevada. In 1877, a wagon train of uh, Mormons came into the area. And uh, before it was a territory, before it was a state, when well, it might as well have been the moon. And then his grandfather got hassled into agreeing to grazing rights just on areas the feds had claimed was theirs. And then they raised the grazing uh, rights fees up to where the 52 families had to leave or bankrupt or had to sell out to the government. And so all that was left was Clive and Bundy. And in the BLM documents that are on Infowars.com that were big national news story last week, the biggest story on the Internet, according to aggregate sites that track that, Google and others, you can look it up. We have, did an article on it showing the stats and the facts. Um, they just, uh, you know, basically um, sent in the Chinese-backed company and with Harry Reid's son to try to basically take it. And, and to say he was a freeloader and a mooch. So if you want to come up and have an anchor baby... Uh, and want to have all your welfare paid for, that's fine. If you're out of the country and you want in-state tuition or free tuition, that's fine. Take old ladies' houses, you know, take people's property if they don't pay their income tax, their property tax, to pay for all these freebies, that's not theft. But let me tell you what is theft. And the big conservative media, most of them said this, the theft is Clive and Bundy on, on government land, running his cattle and producing something out of the desert. What a horrible person. What a terrible person. He should roll over and die 
and just say,